was there an issue like at school being a mixed kid? No, not you know, not at all. No, not at all. No, okay. There were, there were black kids, white kids. We were all having a ball. You know, no. kids don't do that. You know, I don't know. I, I didn't grow up in racist areas. You know, grew up in New York and Europe. You know, got it. Okay, so then I guess at the age of six, you started getting into martial arts. My my father was uh, close friends with Gerald Orange, who was a black belt, uh, and he in uh, Goju Karate, and he would have me and my brother go into it. Um, so we were doing katas and stuff, you know. Uh, I didn't really get the passion until I got older, around 12, uh, and it was because I saw a Bruce Lee commercial, and I was uh, captivated by his uh, aura, you know. Okay, so. You're getting more serious into, into martial arts, and I guess you're doing different types of martial arts as well, right? Well, as a kid, I was doing karate, and then a little older, 13, well, 14, I started doing taekwondo, and I was competing a lot, and uh, competing in taekwondo and karate, and uh, I wrestled in high school. Um, yeah, I was, you know, but primarily it was karate and, and, and then taekwondo, and then I did Chinese goju with Ron Van Cleef, and I won a kickboxing title when I was 18 in Jerome Boxing Gym in the Bronx. And uh, The Last Dragon was after that, you know? Okay. Right after. And a as you were going through all these martial arts uh, classes and so forth, were you getting into any street fights at all? Or were you just keeping well, it in the ring? Well, what happened was uh, to make extra money on the weekends, I used to do security at some clubs. And back then, um, like now they have off-duty cops. So it's very professional, you know? Um, but back then, they just hired a bunch of <laughs> crazy street fighters, you know, uh, like uh, Studio 54 and Bonds International Casino, The Garage, and all these places. Uh, they just want, they didn't, you know, this was kind of new, all these clubs uh, with these big, huge speakers and people waiting online around the corner. It was pretty much, a, a, a you know, something knew uh, so they just wanted protection and that's where uh, I think I had the experience of quite a few fights um, because people would either be trying to sneak in or sell drugs inside the clubs you know and sometimes because I'm not a big guy at all sometimes uh, you know I'm not a tough guy at all either you know but if I have a mission and I'm gonna get paid I you know, I'd have to handle something. And then I had backup too, in case it got too ugly, you know? So, um, yeah, there were times I had a fight, you know? Okay. So, I knew how to handle myself, you know, um, mm -hmm. when things got tough, you know? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, you're, you're getting to 18, 19 years old. You're into martial arts. And I guess, what, you graduated high school around that time? I left high school actually at uh, 18 because I wanted, uh, I had an uh, impulse. I really wanted to study um, physical therapy and, and stuff in college, you know, and phys ed. Um, but I was trying to make money and I didn't have money. And I was uh, helping my father out. He, he was in sales. He was selling women's accessories and stuff. And um, so I was looking at maybe uh, kickboxing and, and things like this, but there was no money there. And then The Last Dragon, I, I took a year off, and that's when The Last Dragon showed up. I was in that space of not sure. College, uh, what, what I was going to do, you know? Okay, and some people don't know that The Last Dragon was actually Barry Gordy's project, who was the head of Motown. Right, it was written by Louis Venosta, who's a Puerto Rican from New York. And uh, the script was bought by Barry Gordy, yeah. Okay, so they started... Well, I guess they started casting for The Last Dragon, and um, there were a few people that were up for the role. I guess Mario Van Peebles, uh, Billy Blanks, they were potentially up for that role, but it didn't really work out with them. Everybody and their mother was up for the role. It's like being cast in Black Panther 2 or something. You know, it was, uh, you know, um, yeah, everybody was on it. I actually was just uh, in the karate tournament scene. Everybody thought that I'd be right for it. I heard about it first there and then through other people. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, there was a lot of people auditioning for it uh, all over the country. At least that's what Barry Gordy showed me, some auditions that other people of other potential actors and martial artists um, auditioning for it.
So you went in for the audition, and I guess initially you didn't do a great job, but then you came back again. That's correct. Uh, I had an expectation that it was a karate exposition, exposition, exhibition <laughs> that I was supposed to perform. So I had my gi with me, and I walked into this building. I thought there was going to be an area where you can sh show off, you know, and do a kata or something, you know. And it was just a traditional casting office where there was a small office and chairs outside and a sign in. And I saw uh, people sitting down with like a script or sides of pieces of the script. And it kind of confused me because I didn't see anybody really warming up or anything. So I was, you know, I was naive and I didn't know anything about the acting world, you know. So uh, casting director name was Jeremy Ritzer, Furin, Furin Ritzer. And he, he asked me to he, sit down and here's a, here's a piece of script, look at it and come in. I'll come call you. So I did that, but I didn't understand anything about how to break down a script, a character, and I didn't understand the character at all. A guy with a hat, kung fu outfit, didn't speak English properly. Um, yeah, so it just didn't make any sense to me reading it on paper. Uh, so I did terrible. He even looked at me while I was reading like, doesn't this guy know how to, what this is about? And I had no idea. And I knew it while I was doing it. And I was really brokenhearted that I was, it got my expectations up, you know. And then he, he said, look, you look the part, but you got to work on this, you know. And I left with my tail between my legs, and uh, that was that. Okay, but then you came back. What happened and... was, what happened was I went on a long trip. My father asked me and my uh, best friend at the time, Richie, to um, uh we're going to clean roofs in, in Miami. And uh, as you know, especially the end of the winter, you want to be in the hot weather with beautiful women and have a great time on the beach. Uh, so we were excited, you know. Uh, my spirits were down, but we were excited. So all the way there, we drove. My father was beating me on the top of my head, telling me, come on, you can, you can do this role right. Let's get those that scene out and let's work on it on the drive over. All we got is time. But my father was like this strong, aggressive guy. And uh, <laughs> I just hated the ride, hated practicing in the car, in the van, actually. And my friend was between us. So by the time we got to Miami, uh, we got out. My father said, take some the luggage out, bring it upstairs. And my friend looked at me, and he knew I was really pissed. And, he, and I said, I don't want to have anything to do with this film. He said, look, if there's a God on earth, this role is written for you. So uh, we were having fun cleaning rooms and laughing and doing the character and all this stuff. So about a month went by, and I went when we came back to New York, I knocked on the door and asked for another chance. And he looked at me like a like a ghost from the past I didn't want to see. And I saw that, but I said, just give me one more chance. And when I went in, he was really impressed with my performance, uh, such that he uh, immediately told me to stop acting and pick up the phone, and he called the production office. And he rushed me over there because I, they had someone that they wanted to cast named Van Silk, and they, he didn't sign the contract, you know, and uh, they didn't, he didn't sign yet, so they fired him and hired me. So you suddenly get the lead role in a major theatrical release. Right. And, I mean, were there any black martial arts films before that? No, no, no. Only in the 70s with Jim Kelly, you know? Okay, right. Yeah, you had the Jim Kelly movies. Right. Yeah, and, but that was like ten, 10 years or more, you know? He was... Okay. At the time, uh, you know, that was that was in the 70s. You know, this is the 80s. Okay. And, you know, here you are, a new actor. I'm sorry. You don't in have... China, well, not in America, but in Asia, um, you had uh, George... Uh, what's his last name? I can't off the top of my head. My God. He, well, that was in Asia. He was doing Kung Fu movies with Shaw, Shaw Brothers. You know, and, you know, so it was like, but, you know, yeah, in, in America, no. Okay. I mean, and this is a big deal. Oh, yeah. You're, and you're coming in with essentially no acting experience. Right. Your first role as the lead. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the contract that you signed, was it? A good contract or one of no, these? No, it wasn't good at all. Uh, at all. And it was one of those things where, uh, yeah, it was one of those things. It was a bad contract. You know, uh, yeah. But here we are today celebrating this movie. 